Imagine if you could ditch that window air conditioner and install your own central air conditioning yourself. And you might think that sounds impossible, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how we installed this 24,000 BTU air conditioning and heating system in less than four hours. And this was perfect for my friend's house where he remodeled his basement, it's about 1,300 square feet, and he wanted to get a single system that could cool and heat the space. And this isn't gonna just be some easy installation that you'll never see yourself because these walls are almost 18 inches thick. And while it's not a replacement for your owner's manual, it will give you some tips and tricks to make the job a bit easier if you decide to install one of these yourself. The system is made by Mr. Cool and it's called a split ductless type of system. That means there are no ducts involved and that means no sheet metal or anything like that that you need to run. And what makes this so easy is you don't have to deal with any of that refrigerant or freon that you used to in the old days. Now those gases are still being used but they're inside the system. It's almost like if you bought a new car they'd pre-fill it for you with a tank of gas. But when you connect everything up, the gas will flow automatically through the entire system the system has two main parts. You've got the condenser, and that's the one that goes outside, and then you've got the air handle that hangs on the wall inside your home. Now you wanna consider that because you have to place both units so that they can reach each other using the included hoses. Now from the factory, they give you a 20 foot line set, so that means you can be 20 feet away from the inside unit to the outside. Now here we found a good location, and unfortunately we had a shrub that we needed to move, but this is where we're gonna place our outside condenser. And the condenser needs to sit on something, and this base can be bought locally, or you can order it right from Mr. Cool. Now we can go down to the basement to figure out where we're gonna hang our air handler. Now you wanna put it in some type of a central location, and this included cardboard template is awesome because you don't have to sit there holding the air handler. You can place this on the wall, level it out, even drill your holes before you ever have to hold the unit in place. With everything leveled out and our screw holes marked, we need to pay close attention to this big hole in the bottom right because we need to drill a hole through the wall to connect our hoses and cords between the two units. Mr. Cool even includes this hole cutting saw in the kit, so this makes the job a lot easier. And if you're just going through a wood wall, this might be all you'll need and it's very easy. But here we've got a bit more work cut out for us and we're gonna start by using the hole saw to remove the drywall. And right underneath, you can see that we've hit a stud. But the most important thing is to peek inside the wall and make sure you're not gonna hit any type of wire or pipes. Now here we've just gotta worry about that stud and this isn't holding up any type of structure in the house. And that hole saw they include is good for either wood or metal. So we're actually gonna cut right through the stud and remove it so it's not in our way. But we're not finished yet because at the end of this opening, there's 10 inches of concrete that we need to go through to fish our lines. Most houses are just gonna have wood walls and you can use that same hole saw to go through in just a few minutes. Going through concrete might sound like a big deal, but it's easy if you know how to do it. Now here we're gonna use this special hole cutting saw designed for this exact job. You will also need a special type of drill to drive this concrete bit. Now your local store can get you fixed up with the right stuff and it's certainly a lot cheaper to do this yourself. Now using this thing is pretty much just like a drill. You're gonna put it into the hole until it touches the concrete and then just start drilling. Now the key is to let this bit do the work. You don't wanna to push too hard on the drill or you can actually wear it out prematurely. Now the problem is that bit is only about four inches long and the wall is about 10 inches. So when the tool bottoms out, you wanna remove it, and now you need to remove the core. But it's actually easy to do. You just get one of these bars, they're inexpensive, and you'll press it into the core itself. It basically just breaks it in two and you can remove the piece. Now you replace the coring bit and keep drilling and repeat the process until you'll eventually break through the wall and reach the outside. And this was the toughest part of the job and we were really excited when that bit finally came out. Now you might be thinking that concrete's ruined, but it's actually just a little bit that came off the outside and it's easy to patch when the job is done. Now we're ready to mount the bracket to hang the inside unit. Don't waste time trying to screw into studs, you're never gonna be that lucky. Just get a pack of these pull toggle bolts. These are a great contractor secret because they actually work and hold 155 pounds each. And you're ready to put the screw in and now you can mount your bracket. Now even though we leveled the template, it's a good idea to keep all the screws a little bit loose because there's a bit of play with this bracket and it allows you to level it completely before you finally tighten all four screws. Now you don't need any tools to mount this, it actually just hooks onto those top clips, but before you do that, you'll wanna make sure that you bend all the hoses and connections out, pointing out at the back of the unit. You're gonna feed these things through that hole that you made and they're gonna go right outside. And once everything looks good, you can go ahead and press the unit fully into position and it'll lock in place. Now as we step back, this thing is really looking good and now we're ready to move on to the outside work. 
Once you're outside, things get a lot easier. You can start by sliding that collar into the hole to protect the cables and then finishing it off with this trim plate. Now it almost covers that bit of concrete damage, but he'll go ahead and slide that forward a bit later and patch out that area. These units come in a lot of different sizes and this one's pretty heavy, so this wheelbarrow made the job a lot easier to move it from the driveway. Now just set the outside unit down on the pad that you already put into position. Check to see if the unit's level and it's easy to adjust that pad to get it perfect. We just need to connect everything up so that we can start using our air conditioner. And now we've got this hose kit that comes as part of the package. It's a good idea to go ahead and roll it out. We slid all the hoses in place behind the units before we connect it up. This is going to make the job a lot easier. And you'll also notice there's a kind of protective wrap over that white plastic. And that just keeps it a little bit cleaner until you're finally done with the installation and can remove it. Because our outside unit is located away from this hole, we went ahead and bent these lines a bit to make the connections a lot easier. This is okay per the manual, but you don't want to bend them to the point where they kink. And those caps aren't keeping the gas in, they're just to protect those lines from getting any type of dirt inside. These have some really fine thread, so always start the connections by hand before you break out your wrench. And surprisingly, Mr. Cool actually includes these two wrenches in the package. Now this connection is absolutely critical, so take your time to use both wrenches. The reason you're using two wrenches is to prevent the entire pipe from spinning. Now you're going to repeat the same process on the condenser itself. Now to do that, you need to remove this protective panel, and that's done easily with just a Phillips head screwdriver. And here's the biggest tip, you don't want to screw this up. You're only going to remove that black and gray cap at this time. Those connect to the black and gray caps on those lines. Don't touch anything else until you've completed this step. Now our lines are connected and tight, but there's still one problem. We don't have any Freon in them because the Freon is still inside the condenser itself. So we've got to allow it to go into the lines and doing that is easy. You're going to remove those two brass caps that are connected on the end of those valves. Now underneath those, there's an Allen screw. And when you turn that completely, that will allow the Freon to flow into the lines. Rotate it counterclockwise until it finally bottoms out. Now you want to do this gently, but go all the way until you feel the resistance and you will hear the gas begin to flow into the line. Now repeat the process for the other line and you're going to leave that screw in the outward position, meaning that you don't tighten it back up. Now this step is optional, but I highly recommend checking for any leaks and it's easy to do. Just mix up some soapy water and spray it all over the connection. If you see something hissing and bubbling, you know that you've got a leak. But we don't see any problems here, so we're ready to move on to the end of the installation, which is the electrical connection. Wiring these units is super easy. In fact, that inside unit doesn't require any dedicated power at all. There's a cable that went through that hole that you'll connect into the back of the condenser. And the one to three connect the two units together, but we've still got to connect the main power itself. That's the L1 and 2. And that's what this box is here for. This was installed by an electrician, and this is going to supply the 220 volts of power to power the entire system. Now you can consider doing this yourself if you feel confident, or you might just want to pay an electrician to do this one part. And these Mr. Cool units do come in two varieties, 220 volt and also 120 volt. That can make a lot of installations a lot easier. So now we've got our power connectors done. All we need to do is close up the unit and we're ready to try it out. Put the batteries in the remote control, flip the breaker on, and now we can see the display is on the unit. This thing is kind of a translucent screen, and in fact it even included this optional module that we installed that will allow a full app control. It uses Bluetooth, and it can even connect to things like Alexa. As soon as we turned it on, I thought everything looked good, but I didn't notice anything running because I couldn't hear the motor. The fan inside this thing is so quiet, you can barely hear it working, but there's definitely good airflow. Within about 30 seconds, this air was ice cold and it was working perfectly. The remote control worked. You can see it had enough power to push that little roller, but even in the whole room, you didn't feel like it was a tornado because those vents so move quiet. a bit and it just kind of circulates the air. So right now we're at the distance of about 24 inches from the unit. I think you can hear the next door neighbor's mower more than you can hear the air conditioner. We're about 15 feet away from this right now. That's as loud as that unit gets. Now my friend's still got a little bit more work to do. He's going to wrap all those hoses up. They give you everything in the box, but he also wants to support that hose against the concrete wall so it's not just hanging in his mulch. This Mr. Cool package really was a bargain at just over $2,000 for a 24,000 BTU system that heats and cools. 
He got quotes between five and six grand to put the same system in and he was gonna have to wait four months to get the job done. I wouldn't hesitate to get another one of these in a minute and I was really thrilled with the overall performance and the installation. Hopefully you liked this video, got you to see something pretty unusual and might be something you consider for yourself. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already for more videos coming up.